doctors of Reddit, what's your most surprising, I can't believe I'm having this conversation with an adult, story? Paramedic here, was driving with my partner and patient was in the back. Patient was fine. Patient's skeezy boyfriend was riding in the front with me and apparently saw a golden opportunity to ask a question that had obviously been on his mind for some time. So, when cats and dogs eat grass, that means they have cancer, right? Um, no. No, it does not. Made for an awkwardly silent ride the rest of the way. Where did this guy hear that? I've never heard that before. Well, it looks like she's about 30 days pregnant. Congrats! How can she be pregnant? She's only around her brother. Well, they actually don't follow the same moral code as you or I. I'm a veterinarian, by the way. Thank you for the clarification there. Not a doctor, yet, but I'm an ER tech. For about two years now, mom comes in with her baby plus two more older kids, complains that the baby hasn't pooped in a while and won't stop crying. As I'm settling them in with one of the nurses, the baby is bawling, like opera singer lungs bawling. Suddenly, mom whips out a white plastic shopping bag and sticks an end in the kid's mouth and says, this is the only way she stops crying. Nurse and I share a look and immediately order an emergency x-ray on the kid's stomach. Turns out she had ingested a good amount of these bags and it was blocking up in her stomach. Big deal. Potentially life-threatening. When we confront the mom about her baby feeding habits, her only words of defense are, well, I checked all over the bag and I couldn't find anything on it that said non-edible. This woman's a potential danger to her kids. She has two older kids, meaning she was probably doing this with them too before. I told a patient that the 30 plus cups of coffee he was drinking every day could possibly be the reason of his chief complaints of anxiety and insomnia. He said he wasn't willing to give this up or try decaf. That's an insane amount of caffeine intake. Like, that's not healthy for multiple reasons. When I was an internal medicine resident, I came across a very nice 50-year-old Dominican lady. She was well-mannered, but one could tell she wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. As I was prepping her chart for our first visit, I noticed that she'd been seen by every single digestive disease MD in our hospital system. Not only that, she'd had every single procedure in the book, ranging from endoscopies up both holes and culminating in an exploratory laparotomy. You're opened up to basically look inside you when we have no clue what's going on. All of this because for years she'd had one single complaint. She reported severe gnawing pain in her stomach. At this point I should mention that she was Spanish speaking only. Not only that, she had a very heavy Dominican accent and I was the first Hispanic doctor to ever see her. My first language is Spanish and even I had difficulty understanding her. So she comes in and after exchanging some first time pleasantries, I politely ask her how she's doing. Sure enough, although she was smiling and said she felt well, she pointed at her belly and said it was biting again and asked for the cream to kill it. At this point, I got intrigued. Her medication list only mentioned a cream used for herpes breakouts. The previous fellow only mentioned in his notes that in every single visit, she only asked for the cream and nothing else. When I asked what she meant by the biting and what she intended to do with the cream, she very calmly tells me she intends to stick the cream up her butt in order to kill the bird living inside her. After delving more deeply into her story, it turns out she didn't have a medical condition. Ever since she was a little girl, she believed that after eating a whole quail egg, the bird had spawned inside her and gnawed away at her insides whenever she was hungry. After a short visit to psych, she was diagnosed with a somatic type delusional disorder. No amount of medication or psychotherapy will cure her, but she was still a fully functional mother of two who paid her taxes and had two part-time jobs. I reached out to every digestive disease doctor in our hospital system once more to make sure she never receives an inappropriate invasive intervention. I've been following her for three years now, and she's as happy as one can be, considering she has a bird living inside her. Why wasn't a translator brought in long before? Why did it take her going through every single doctor and a range of surgeries to finally find someone who spoke Spanish? While in dental school, my friend pulled out several bombed out teeth on an adult male. After the procedure was finished and post-op instructions were given, the man asked, So when should I expect my new teeth to grow in? He was serious. 
My significant other is a med student. He helped to diagnose a 40-year-old woman who finally sought out a doctor after having open, festering wounds on her entire torso for over a year. The open wounds only appeared after more than a year of painful, visible lumps on her breasts. She had never sought treatment prior to this. My significant other had to inform her that her entire body was riddled with cancer, that there was no treatment to help her, and that she would be dead very soon. Her sister, who was there the entire time began loudly proclaiming what a shame it was that nothing could ever have been done and that hopefully someday we would be able to detect cancer sooner. My significant other watched the doctor explain that pretty much any other woman in the country would have gotten effective treatment at the first sign of the lumps. This was during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Guys, if something's wrong, just get checked. Don't put it off for a year. You never know what you're dealing with. Better safe than sorry. As a veterinarian, I had a 10-minute conversation with an owner explaining which side was the dog's left side. It's the left side. The, the, the left. I saw a patient who was concerned that she was still lactating, despite the fact that she had stopped breastfeeding her twins two years ago. She said, Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and find my husband sucking on them. He says he's trying to drain the milk for me. I had to explain to her that breastfeeding her husband will lead to continued lactation. Okay, this one's just creepy. Medical assistant to a cataract surgeon here. If you sleep with your contact lenses in long enough, they will fuse to your eyes and you'll need to go to surgery to have them removed. Yes, you can go blind from this. For the love of God, don't sleep with your contact lenses in. Thank you for the PSA and horrifying imagery. Got placed during a rotation in the orthopedic floor of a big hospital in a rural area in Southern California. I was doing my rounds and saw a patient out of bed and walking around the floor following a knee replacement. She had a cane in her hand that she was carrying as a soldier would a rifle. I asked what she was doing and what she thought the cane was for. She replied she thought the cane was for pushing people out of her way since she's now handicapped. I mean, I guess that's one way to use it. I'm a pharmacist, but the comment still relates. Had a lady call in complaining that her husband's Viagra wasn't working. I then went on to explain to the patient's wife that in order for the medication to work, the patient needed some sort of stimulation. The lady just screamed aloud, ME? And then hung up the phone. Still my favorite Viagra story. The fact that you have multiple Viagra stories to choose from makes me want to sit down and have a conversation. My friend is a student doctor and is on placement at a small town's doctor office. She had a 70-ish year old woman come in with complaints of a small but painless growth that was visible at the back of her throat. Turns out, it took her 70 years to notice her uvula. Yeah, that's been there the whole time. Client brings in her dog for a tick she tried to burn off. Looking, I see it's a nipple and tell her this. She says, But he's a boy! How can he have nipples? I say, Ma'am, your husband has nipples. Blank stare, then light bulb moment for her. Not a doctor, but I regularly have people come in for eye examinations because when I take my glasses off, things are blurry. Often, these aren't passing comments during the exam, but the main reason for their visit to the clinic. Patient comes into ER, 19 year old male. I'm getting his history. Why are you here today? Every morning I wake up and my stomach hurts. How long has it been hurting? All my life. Well, what's different today that made you come here? My girlfriend doesn't think it's normal. More questions, exam by ER physician, followed by lab tests. The abdominal pain always goes away after he eats, always. He wakes up hungry, he thinks it's pain. I... <sighs> I don't know what to say to this one. Just eat food? During residency in an urban northeastern USA city, I was in a clinic. A very pleasant 50-something lady came in for a physical. Everything was going fine when she casually asks if there's any new vaccines out. She was up to date with everything, so I asked if she had any specific concerns. She was casually asking to see if she could vaccinate her gay adult son against homosexuality. Very nice, always had a smile on her face, even when I broke the news to her. 
My mom was the head nurse at a clinic here in Houston in the 80s. She worked for an old World War II doctor that had gone into private practice as an old school general practitioner when he returned back to the States. Well, one afternoon, she told me that they had a patient come in that was running a high fever and was complaining of pain in her pelvic area. My mom also tells me that there was a stench coming from the woman's lap that could only be described as enough to gag a maggot off a meat wagon. She begins to interview the patient who told her that her and her boyfriend had been sexually active and that she has been in pain since. She thought that the woman may have contracted an STD and asked her to undress and wait for the doctor to examine her. The doctor arrives and closes the door, only to reopen it a few seconds later, mentioning about the need for fresh air. The doctor noticed that there was a discharge and began to question the patient about her sex life. Was it protected, not protected, things like that. According to my mom, the patient told her, No doc, we always use a rubber. The doctor looked down, then noticed there was a small rubber band extending from the woman's private area. The doctor reached in with his gloved hand and pulled it out. What came next can only be described as a magician pulling the cloth out of someone's mouth. One rubber band after another came out over the course of the next 10 minutes. Finally, once they were all removed, the doctor had the talk with the woman about sex education and that rubber bands were not a successful contraceptive and not what they meant by wearing a rubber. That is just horrible in so many ways. Not a doctor, but a dental hygienist. I had to explain that brushing your teeth with Comet, the cleaner, was not a good way to clean your teeth. To a 40-year-old woman, I also had to tell a woman that was painting her teeth with white fingernail polish that that was a bad idea. A 32-year-old grown man asked me if the hot spells he was experiencing at night meant he was going through menopause. My mother helps the Amish get dental care. One Amish woman complained that she needed new dentures. When asked why she thought so, she replied, Well, I've lost weight, and you know that when you lose weight, you lose it in your gums first. Doctors and dentists, if you're looking for a community to serve, the Amish can truly use your help. I could write a book about the things I've seen. Why would you think it would be the gums? It's just such a weird and random place. I was a newly minted graduate with fresh and optimistic views on my life as a doctor. Second week in came this old lady and her very dysfunctional family. They would argue and complain about everything, from the food, the nurses they didn't like, and every single medical decision we made. She was very, very sick, so her management was just as complicated. She had several children, and they all didn't like one another and would not talk to one another. Each time, we would have to explain a long update to every single one of them, because they're entitled to hear it from a doctor. One of these stories being sitting down and explaining why you don't give Gatorade as an IV drip. They didn't understand why we were giving salt water to her. The conversation with her son went something like this. Look, she likes Gatorade. She's drinking it, so why can't you give it to her through her drip? We explain why, and the son frowns. But it's isotonic. We explain again. Yes, but Gatorade has more electrolytes. We explain again. Salt water just seems to be too cheap. Can't you give her something else closer to Gatorade that has electrolytes? This continues for two hours. Wash and repeat every day during her admission. Afterwards, I told my fiance. He opened up a scene from Idiocracy on YouTube, and I just sat there with my mouth open for a while. Yes, you drink Gatorade. You don't inject it directly into the bloodstream. Two very different things. While on dermatological rotation, a Middle Eastern patient saw me with what she described as some funny itching growth on her butt crack. Some quick investigation revealed it to be a severe case of genital warts. I explained the diagnosis and that it was an STD, until she shockingly assured that she was still a virgin. Now, virginity is a big issue for young Muslim women, or perhaps their families even more, but apparently that doesn't cover other types of sex, and therefore no birth control in the form of, say, condoms was needed. EMT here. I had a grown adult trying to explain to me that someone else pooped his pants. Got called out for finger pain at a homeless shelter at 2 a.m. We get there and the guy jumps in the truck with very mild swelling to the tip of his right index finger. Here's how the conversation went. Me. So, what happened? Yeah, I smoked some stuff and then I fell asleep in my bunk and I woke up next to my bunk and my finger hurt and there was poop. There was poop? Did you fall in poop? No, no, like in my pants. 
pants. So you pooped your pants. No, it wasn't me. So let me get this straight. You smoked something, took a nap, rolled out of your bed in your sleep, hurt your finger, and someone else came along and pooped in your pants before you woke up? That's what I'm saying. It wasn't me. My friend, I think you need to take a step back and analyze the situation here. My brother is a general practitioner in rural Tennessee. Enough said, right? He says most of his patients' visits go something like this. Well, person, you're pre-diabetic, have high blood pressure, and are complaining about joint pain. Have you been exercising and cutting out sugar and carbs? Yeah, I have, doc, but it doesn't seem to help. Do you have any better meds you could prescribe? Well, let's talk about your diet. How much water do you drink a day? I don't like water. As I get extra ice in my sweet tea every day to make sure I get enough water. My brother explains that that's not enough water by a long shot. How much sweet tea are you drinking every day? Those can have a lot of sugar in them. Well, I get a large one from Hardee's or McDonald's or wherever on my way to work with my breakfast and another one on my way home for dinner. Then I have a glass or two when I get home. Well, that's a lot of sugar and a lot of fast food if you're eating it twice a day. What do you eat at home? I don't like to cook, so I usually don't eat anything except those little Debbie snack cakes at home. Those have a lot of sugar, too. I thought that all I had to do was cut out Mountain Dew. Now you're saying I can't eat my food or my snacks? What are you suggesting I do? Eat salads for every meal? Why can't you just up my meds? I relate to this patient's eating habits a little too much, probably. I had to explain to an adult that you have to brush all the sides of your teeth. Like, no, just the side that shows when you smile is not enough. And yes, flossing is not just a thing for rich people. Patient comes in at 2 a.m. for insomnia, clearly tweaking her brains out. Heart rate at 200. Can't sit still, bouncing off the walls. I suggest maybe easing up on the snow. But doctor, I love the snow. I was working in GP and had a patient scheduled for an appointment. I looked through his notes to gain an idea of why he may be seeing me, and saw he'd been seen a few times with knee pains and shoulder pains and the like. The guy is in his 70s, so probably just arthritis. I'm thinking I'll do an examination of his sore joints and ask a few questions, prescribe some painkillers, and it'll be a quick one. I call him in, and he walks in and sits down and is cheery as anything. What seems to be the problem then, sir? I notice you've had some issues recently with sore joints, I ask him. He then proceeds to tell me about his sore knee. So I check his knee and take a history and it all seems fine. I ask if there's anything else and he remembers actually his neck is sore too. So I check his neck and nothing untoward to be found there either. At this point he's like, okay well thanks doc I'll be off then. I say to him oh good, glad we could help and do you have no other pains at all before you go? He then sits back down and tells me he's been having central crushing chest pain radiating down his left arm and into his jaw since last night and has been feeling breathless and when it happened he had an impending sense of doom. I know a lot of you won't be doctors here but I'm sure you all recognize the signs of a heart attack there. He had all the classic textbook symptoms. I called the ambulance and he was rushed to the hospital. Sounds like this dude was taking a heart attack like a champ. My dad told me about an extremely religious male patient who was concerned about his nocturnal emissions. He saw it as an offense to God and wanted to know what he could do to stop it. My dad's response? Well, it's gotta go somewhere, my guy. Nurse here, retired after 27 years on the job. The number of American 20-somethings that don't know if they're circumcised or not is surprisingly high. When one with urinary tract infection symptoms needs to be given a specimen for testing, I ask, are you circumcised? If not, I have to tell them to pull back the foreskin before peeing in the cup. The number of guys who have asked, what's that, is way too many. For the record, I can count the number who were uncircumcised on two hands. This one's from my cousin, who's a doctor. He was in his first year in a clinic, and people went there to have an appointment because he was good looking. Elderly ladies loved him particularly, but this is totally unrelated. And the worst case was when this elderly lady goes in with her granddaughter, around eight years old. She had a severely infected wound on her head. Upon close inspection, he saw the wound crawling with small maggots, and the smell was terrible. He was very upset, of course, and asked why didn't she wash the wound 
wound didn't bring her earlier. She said she thought it would heal with time and was afraid to wash it, lest water enters her brain and kills her. There was also a woman that took her six-year-old daughter there to check why she still didn't have pubes. You know, old folks are supposed to be wise, but when it comes to medicinal stuff, a lot of the times they're very much behind the curve. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.